interesting life, to say the least, right? Um, we chose this because we do not like the normal. Um, and sometimes we sacrifice little things uh, to get to uh, some of our other goals. But uh, health and wellness is truly important to me. I am uh, Nick Stair. I'm a team leader here for my home group with the Latin team. Uh, but I'm a huge uh, health advocate. Um, I have owned several gyms here in the Valley. Um, have helped write a lot of uh, core principles for just staying healthy in general. Um, and love to just kind of convey some of my life experiences back to people that kind of have similar careers that I have and kind of ways to build a better year. Um, so life by design. Um, a lot of this content you guys would probably have seen before, but we're gonna kind of reiterate it. It's the middle of September, right? It's starting to get a little nicer here in Phoenix where we can go outside and actually have some fun, right? Um, if you were listening to our little brief discussion over here, in uh, the realtor world, what our te and team, what I like to th think about it is October 1st is like January 1, mm -hmm. New Year, because wintertime, any other part of the United States, November, December, January, February, a lot of that is uh, harder months to make real estate happen, right? We're literally coming out of our winter. June, July, August, September, no one's putting open house signs up at 115. I know some of us do, and that's fun. I know that everyone's going to be like, oh yeah, I did. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it's a time of the year that's harder, we would think, to, to stay motivated. We're inside a lot more. One of the things we sacrifice with that is our health. We eat less, we don't exercise as much, uh, we let stresses get to us. Our finances can take a dip uh, during the summer, so financial stress. Um, things tend to happen uh, along that way. So uh, this particular presentation um, is not me educating you guys on anything you probably don't already know. I'm just gonna kind of lead you down a little bit of a roll and a reassessment on where you currently sit, right? And this is really a, a choice that you guys get to make on how you wanna really look at yourself. Now, you're around a lot of your peers and we have noticed this when we've done this kind of assessments before that a lot of people have a tendency to rank themselves a little higher when they're around their peers. So I would challenge you to be truthful to yourself because it does not matter to me directly how brutally honest you want to be with yourself. But if you want to be brutally honest with yourself and tell yourself, this is where I truly sit, do it. And we'll have a couple tactics in here today to possibly identify the obstacles that you continuously hit and then also a way to possibly build past those and maybe get to you where you want to be over the course of our official year. So life by design. Our mission can be uh, kind of impossible when we talk about this kind of stuff. We just mentioned it. We're going to explore the core seven life assessments. What are the major things in your life? What impacts you as you uh, move around your day? Uh, you'll have the option of making a choice. I kind of talked about that just briefly ago. Uh, we'll talk about having a plan, identifying the actions that are going to make you happier, feel more engaged, and more appreciative of the life that you're currently living. Visualize your life as you want it to be, and create accountability and structure. All of these things are key, important ways to see where you're going to go. I'm also going to bring in a couple visual examples, which is videos. I just feel like it's a great way to relate to you and kind of show you uh, people that do things a little different. Realtors are very interesting people. Um, <laughs> have you ever heard the time herding cats? Like, no one has the same thought process on their life. You chose to be a little bit out of the norm. Um, and so that's a great thing. Um, here are our seven core life principles. And we can go over this uh, kind of briefly and talk about where you are. And we're going to assess those as we go. So I usually start uh, with two different ways of explaining this. These are your seven core. This is identified by Zig Ziglar, spiritual, emotional, intellectual, physical, social, environmental, and financial. Now, I've had this discussion with people and they will argue with me about these are not their favorite seven things in their lives. So what we did is the mental state, your spiritual state, your physical state, your family state, your financial, personal, and career will all mix in different ways to see how successful you are in each category. Your family, will most likely affect you emotionally, physically, and socially. Your physical will obviously affect your physical, but also might affect you emotionally. 
how you feel about stuff. So when we go about and you're assessing how you're thinking about where you are currently, think about these, but then try to apply them into the categories. So let's just review over what each of these are real quick. Your emotional health is maintaining a healthy emotional life is important to overall health. Some ways to stay emotionally healthy are to manage your stress levels. I, we're real estate people. There's no stress in real estate, right? It's pretty uh, straightforward. You just, you know, go make lots of money. Don't work any hours. Just hang out. Um, how many of you get eight hours of sleep? Couple. I say, but of the percentage, I'd say maybe that's about third, twenty-five percent of the people. Um, <laughs> Sleep is very, very important. Obviously, uh, we can touch that base a little bit more. Uh, your intellectual wellness it means staying curious and engaging and learning new things, uh, creative activities, read for pleasure, be aware of social and political issues. Uh, we're not going to get into social and political issues today. Um, we'll keep that out of this. That probably would make us all very unhealthy as we have that conversation. Um, joining a club focusing on enhancing intellectual interests. Uh, who's read more than five books this year? Who's read more than 10? Anybody? I always ask because I'm curious. So see, reading, uh, it's funny, uh, over the last 20 years, we've actually seen an uptick in reading, um, which is actually a nice thing where in the 70s and 90s and early 2000s, it went down. Um, and now we're seeing more and more people read, engaging through Audible, which is uh, you know listening to books is what I prefer. Um, driving around in the car like we all do, instead of listening to the radio, plugging in audio books is a great way to stay engaged intellectually. Uh, physical wellness, we all can kind of talk about that. Body exercise, eating well-balanced diets, nutrition, again, sleeping, managing stress, uh, preventative medical and dental care. Uh, I will highly recommend everyone go to the dentist because <laughs> everyone doesn't go, and that's a big problem for a lot of people. Um, social wellness involves having a strong social network and give your support and guidance when you are stressed. Um, environmental wellness, talking about how you feel about the people you hang out with. I think we all hear that term. Um, you're the, the sum of the five people you hang out with the most. Who's the environment you that you're around? Do, is it a positive environment or does it bring you down? Having the ability to kind of change those things is something to think about as well. We don't have to talk about this one, but we can. Financial. Um, we're all in this for business. It's a competition. We all want to make money. Um, be honest with yourself on your financial assessment. Um, I even mentioned this because the youth in this room, um, under the age of 40, how many of you actually, you don't have to answer this, uh, have your future planned out financially? Our generation, I'm a little bit younger, uh, we're very, very bad at it. Do not think about the future, only focus on today. Financial future is like, I'll deal with that in five years because I'm dealing with today. Um, and then spiritually, we're not going to argue over, uh, sorry, um, your beliefs, but one thing you want to think about is do you actually have a belief? Do you have non-negotiables? Do you have values? Do you have ethics? Is this something that you stick with on a consistent basis? So I'm going to give you guys a chance to ponder those subjects, right? And uh, we're going to get into a, a quick video on visualization. I think a lot of people own a house just sort of fill their house with stuff because they're like, oh, we have all this space, let's fill it. Of all the possessions that somebody owns, I mean, only a tiny fraction of them actually increase their happiness. And so when you're living in a really small space like a van, you're pretty focused on like, these are the six things that I use, these are the ones I care about, this is what I want, and everything else you just let it go. <coughs> Materialist culture has a lot to do with like filling this hole of like not really knowing what you want with your life, not really knowing what makes you the happiest. If you have some kind of true passion, you don't need any of the extra stuff. Has anyone ever heard of Alex Honnold? So I've been watching Alex Honnold for 10 years. He's a climber. Um, he only lives off like six base core principles that he loves in his life. You saw he lives out of a van. He climbs uh, for his life. We're not going to get that extreme. I don't seem to break down your life into six <laughs> things. Like these are the six that you get to have in your life. 
Um, but the reason why I, I will show him a couple different times throughout this video is that looking at people that are extremely focused, uh, they have six or seven things that they know that they have to do that will drive them to what their ultimate goal is. You're gonna have seven categories. We just kind of went over them. What are the one or two things that you can tweak to kind of get you to where you want to be in different parts of your life? Now, we, we're very much business here. It's a, my home group, real estate. So financial is something different. We won't really cover that too dramatically in, in detail. But having that laser focus will be key. Uh, I think Bruce Lee's uh, quote between, uh, what is the difference between a normal person and a warrior is just laser focus. If you're really focused on what you want to do in any category of your life and you put right momentum behind it, the consistency and you're focused on it, you'll get there. It just might be, time frame might change a little bit. So during this as well, we're going to get this as well. While we're kind of getting started here, before we start getting into the assessment, I want you to think about all those seven categories. And what we've noticed is there's usually one big problem. If you're not at the level you want to be in one of those categories, it's usually one or two big things, a lot of times one, that's blocking you from getting to where you want to be. Now, a great example is socially, you have to make sacrifices with family. I can't be as social because I have a new daughter. That's kind of a sacrifice you kind of take in. But I can't be with my family or can't have a great environment at home because I drink too much. There'd be your examples of big obstacles. Now, I don't want to, you don't have to explain that to yourself, but every time you look at some of those categories, if you're not ranking yourself where you want to be, there should be something that you dig deep into that this is something that's blocking you. And if it's the question of time, which a lot of times I don't have enough time to do this, we have a direct objection to that, but if that keeps coming up consistently, you really want to dig into what the actual problem is. Not time, maybe not meeting up early enough, or not eating correctly enough, or not doing different things. So uh, let's dive into all the different things. Here's some of your obstacles, obviously. I brought it up, time, tons of people, money, stress, a lot of different things that go into what they're thinking about. So what are your obstacles? We're gonna talk a little bit more about Alex Honnold and his obstacle. This is a nice obstacle to kind of think about. But let's go by the numbers. So if you guys have your sheets, you can open them up. We're going to have you guys do a really basic, 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 basic way of just assessing where you currently are. There. Oh, yep, there should be some back here. Anyone else have some? Everyone got one? I do have an issue. Yeah, I got it. I will grab them. <clears throat> so we're going to get started here. Your emotional state. Now, emotions are interesting. People always think them about love, hate, all those kind of things. You're welcome. So emotionally, how is your stress level? On a scale of down thumb, see, I don't like going one to 10 either because I feel like everyone always goes five, six, seven, and eight. That's like the normal. All right, so if it's a down thumb, my stress level is, you know, pretty high. Like you can feel a little anxiety from your stress. That's a down thumb. If you have no stress, which you're all realtors, so that's all bullshit. We know that. It's true. Your stress is going to be somewhere. If you're a 10 on your stress level and you're not having any stress, I need to work with you. Tell me what's up. Like how to fix that. Uh, sleep. We kind of asked about the sleeping. Do you feel like you get enough sleep? Do you wake up feeling energized? Do you wake up feeling good? I know that's sometimes harder uh, days than others, but do you wake up feeling good? Uh, your work to life balance. Do you have a good mix of both? Uh, it's an interesting thing uh, looking back on some experiences that I've gone through personally and watching some of uh, people that I help coach and some whatnot. Their work-life balance um, swings really dramatically two different, both directions. They go heavy work for an entire week and then realize that they're burned down or they go for 30 days and they burn it down and then they have to go like two weeks off. Um, but with you, how's the balance? Do you feel like you get a good mixture of both each day? 
Um, then do you ask for help? Now this is mostly for the guys because it's true, guys do not ask for help ever. It's true, we're just not, not allowed to ask for help. We talked about, Kelly and I talked about this last week. For whatever reason, do you ask for help? It's a way of allowing yourself to be vulnerable, which is not necessarily a great thing, but also encouraging the environment around you to know that you're not perfect. Um, none of us are perfect, we all make lots of mistakes. If you think you're succeeding at everything, then you probably are having a weird assessment of where you are. Um, I would recommend you think about that for a second, and then you can give yourself an overall rank. Now, if your overall ranking does not match where your check marks are, think about it just a little bit longer. So give yourself an overall score of where you think your emotional state is, one to 10. So five would be I'm feeling okay about it. One, you really need to fix maybe your stress level, sleep more, work balance isn't good, and you don't ask for help, your emotional should be down that lower, you know, below five mark. How about intellectual? Personal development. I love personal development. I love reading books. It's funny, uh, I just started again like two years ago, but from the, uh, there's a study that says after the age of, or after college, the average adult reads three books. Like, again, like, again, like three books. And so I read that and I was like, I've read one, so I probably should change this. And so, uh, Personal development can be books. Personal development can be exercise, actually. Personal development can be having a moment of zen in the morning. Per personal development can be doing mantras. Um, if you know me, I have my own mantra. I made it up. I do it 300 times a day because real estate is hard and I need to re-click my mind continuously. Um, interesting one for us, feeling challenged intellectually. You might be working with clients. You're like, these people are driving you insane. But uh, do you feel challenged? Do you push yourself to think and challenge yourself to learn something new. Different one I, I kind of have on here is with your intellectual, is commitments and reviewed your commitments. The reason why I think this is extremely important and we're gonna apply this back to what you guys are, you, every one of you is a business owner. So intellectually, are you actually running it like a business? So this is why I brought this up is because you can do a lot of different things. And as a business owner, intellectually, you should be setting commitments for yourself over short term and long term. But are you ever going back and reviewing how you did? Which is kind of what we're doing today, but on a little bit of a different scale. So your commitments intellectually, are you putting out things that are right? Do you have numbers behind that? Are you intellectually pushing yourself on what I can achieve and what I cannot achieve? And do you go back and actually analyze that and review it? Physical. Fun one. Do you exercise three to four days? That's about what everyone is recommended to do. Um, staying healthy and active, I think, will make your life better. If you're not healthy, as far as physical and mental, what's the point of any of this, right? Nutrition, health, eat greens. People always ask me, oh, my, my wife designs meal plans for a lot of people and whatnot, and it's hard to push people to do things, but I just ask them a real basic question. Do you eat greens? Do you eat broccoli, kale, spinach, anything like that? And the answer most of the time is no. And if they do, they're covered in ranch. I'm like, well, that's kind of disappointing. So, uh, you know, that's not really eating greens. You're eating ranch. And so, um, but eating greens, obviously, is a big thing. I brought this up. Do you visit your doctor and the dentist? Um, I'm a little partial to the dental side just because I live with a, a professor of hygiene. Um, but your mouth is the gateway to your body. And I always tell this people, because I know people go to the doctor when they have these major things happen. Well, your mouth actually lets a lot of those major things happen because if you don't have your mouth cleaned regularly, it just goes down. The first cause of heart attacks is usually abscess and bacteria in the mouth. Just a weird dental tip. So, do you guys do that? Again, sleep and manage stress. Recheck yourself on that sleep and manage stress, which you might have not been truthful to yourself. Where are you at? Um, social, and I know I messed this up on the slide, so I apologize. So you have to go up what I put up here because I printed it incorrectly. Uh, your social. Do you have a positive group of five? Is your five group, the people, the five main people you hang with, a positive group? <clears throat> I know I, I put the wrong, I changed that up. So I was changing the slide around and I ended up printing it off twice. So I apologize. Um, good one. Do you laugh daily? 
Uh, I'm trying to remember the statistic, and I can't uh, apologize if I get it completely wrong. I think the average baby laughs 400 times per day. The average female is like 125, and the average male is like 15. Sad, actually. Um, again, do you ask for help? No, we cry in the corner by ourselves. That's what we do. Um, do you have a passion? So are you passionate about something? Do you have something that's outside uh, your framework of even family, uh, work that you're passionate about. Do you actually have something that you really love to do, can do it, do it on a regular basis, that gives you an outlet? Even being a part of a team, being a, like reading can be, a, this all kind of interjects with each other. Again, I bring up again, sleep and manage stress, because this is the one that bothers people the most. Environmental, are you organized? Do you feel like your environment around you is one of productivity or do you, when you go to work each day or go to home each day you feel like you have to clean your desk that's a whole real estate funny thing it's just like I had a really productive day I clean my desk like it's a mess like so do you feel organized um, do you volunteer do you help others and do you feel connected these middle two do you volunteer? I'm not saying that you have to go out and like work at a homeless shelter to be a successful environment. What it's supposed to be recognizing is, do you feel like you're contributing to the better path, or the bigger path, or however you want to describe it? Um, and which goes into, do you feel connected? One of the really sad things that we see in our generation is uh, the more and more connected that we get, the less and less connected that we are with individuals that are around us. So we feel like, oh, I, I watched this person on Facebook, I saw the YouTube video, I was on Twitter, I checked this. And we feel like we really know people, but we're not actually connected with them because we really have nothing, we only see a lot of this, yay, I'm special. You know, uh, look at this little glossy picture that I put up that I spent 30 minutes making sure that you like it. Uh, but uh, do you feel connected to people? And uh, be in part that this is your business. We talked about this, we might as well relate it back. If you're not staying connected with the people that you like and love, business might suffer in that direction as well. Financial, we'll keep this very, very simple. How's your financial health currently? How's your financial stress currently? And how about for the future? On both. Now, you're, now the, people always ask me the health and stress, like what's the difference? Well, if you're financially healthy today, that means you probably have, you know, you feel comfortable, you can live good. But are you stressed about how you're living? Do you feel stressed that I might overspend or I, know I need to make sure I save more? I have these bills coming up that I need to make sure that we have for in real estate. We're a 90 day business. You have a 90 day flop and you're trying to financially stay healthy. Do you have those 90 days? Do you feel like that's good? And I brought this up earlier about younger generations, financial health of future, and are you stressed about that? You could have zero health in your financial future and not be stressed about that. That's a real thing. Like you could be like, I have, no, I, I'm literally not healthy. I'm a one on financial health of the future, but I'm not stressed about it either. So I'm a ten. You don't even think about it. Like that's just out of your mind. Something to think about as you do your overall ranking of your financials. And lastly, spiritually, not going to get into crazy subjects that, you know, could be a lot longer, but do you feel connected? This is with yourself, who you want to be, how you want to live your life, where you want it to go. Do you understand you? It's an interesting question because I think that changes pretty regularly on who you think you are. Um, do you pray, meditate, and relax? You don't have to do those things to actually have a clear mind. You can do that through other sources. So to kind of bring it up as this is a way for you to kind of relax and enjoy yourself. And do you explore? That mostly has to do with yourself as well. Do you put other thoughts, different people's opinions in your own shoes and to see how you interpret them? Um, one of the great books that I'm working myself through, again, is Principles by Ray Dalio. He's a uh, billionaire investor, kind of redesigned the financial market. One of the ways he describes people is there are people that can do all different types of things, but people that are shapers can explore themselves and figure out, 
hey, I'm a little off here. And that's really what we want you guys to do here today. If you guys were, this is actually would be a good uh, check mark. You're exploring yourself right now, kind of figuring out what you guys think of that kind of stuff uh, and where you currently are spiritually. So we talked about it here. Here's our mission again. We're going through it. We just explored our seven core principles. Now, interesting part, you kind of know where you are. You have to make a choice. Is that choice going to be to improve some of those categories that you're lacking on, maintain where you are, or are you going to go back? I love this quote. I've used it a lot. Uh, there's no neutral in this life. You're either moving forward or you're falling back. There's no such thing as staying where you currently are. You're either going to go forward a couple steps or you're going to go right back to where you started off three years ago, right? We'll get a little bit more into Alex Honnold here, so... Do you want to go forward or do you want to go back? I know, it gives me babies. So I'll even talk as this is going on because I think it's kind of important to what I, the reason why I'm bringing it up. He's not wearing anything. Huh? He's not wearing anything. So Alex Honnold is considered a good climber. He is not wearing a rope. This is called free soloing. If you've never seen it before, it is incredible the mental capacity of what he's able to visualize. He has six things in his van that he knows he needs to survive this. If he messes up and he doesn't do something correctly on this, his consequence is one big thing. It's over. He knows this. Oh my gosh. He is 3,500 feet up, and after the 30th step, you go up 30 feet, there is no turning back. You either go up, or you're coming off the wrong way. Oh my gosh. It's incredible. Absolutely incredible mental fortitude. The reason why I bring this up, because I love watching stuff like this, because it's incredible. I'm afraid of heights, and my palms are sweating. Like, I watched the last night at like 11 o'clock, and I was really tired, and I had like this anxiety hit me, and I was just like, but when you look at him, he is no different than you, 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 you. There's no difference. He's able to accomplish things that the human never thought they could do because he has dreamed about it his entire life. Uh, he's up here. <laughs> he's but I'll ask you guys all this, and you think about it right now. Do some of you not feel like this in some of those seven categories of your life? Are you, are you standing on a wall, looking at the end of everything? Financially? Emotionally? Family-wise? Relationship-wise? If you don't take those next steps to get to where you want to go and those categories are your life, are you going to die? The answer is no. 99% of those things that you guys are asking yourself right now. So, 2,500 feet. The crazy thing about this is he does some of this so fast. He climbed, uh, if you've ever been to Yosemite, El Capitan, it takes 17 hours to do it. He did it or by a good climber. Like by an experience with ropes. He did it in three and a half hours. No, no rope. It's crazy. So his big obstacles is a giant wall in front of his face. And he says to himself, I can either go up and go over it, or I'm just not going to do anything. Okay? So you've all written down your assessments on some of your seven categories. Uh, the big part of this as well is our mission was to kind of figure out, okay, what are ways that we can get around some of these things? So I give you a challenge right now. Your big obstacles. It's not a giant rock wall in your face. It's most likely some very small, subtle changes that if you make them and actually commit to them and do a couple little things, you will actually get past something just as big as Al Capitan in your own mind. Just as big. So what are your big obstacles? Take some time to think about it. If you're an 8 and 10, 
in some of those categories, but I'll be honest with you, I'm not an eight and ten in anything. Not one category am I an eight and a ten in. If I could isolate just my, my wife and my daughter, ten. But that doesn't count. It's just that. It incorporates a lot of different things that go on into my life. So I'm not here to tell you how to do those things, but really think about it. Where are you at with all those things? So if you're an eight and ten, maybe pick one thing that you can do to stay the same. If you're there already, keep it. Like if you're intellectually like, I read 20 books a year, I, I push myself, health and fitness ladies, probably physical is really high up there. You don't have to change that much, but staying consistent is an easy one. Stay consistent and hold to what you're doing. Really hard to do for a year, especially health-wise, especially financial. Some of the guys, are, these people are working in real estate for 20 years. Consistency is going to change how your business works. And it's probably a reason why you're still doing it 20 years later rather than the other 95% of people that fail doing business. So you have some of your big obstacles, okay? You know what those are. You're thinking about them. What we want to do is we want to isolate them. And we want to pick out 15 very, very small wins. And the way you kind of do this is very simple. If you are a one to three in any of your categories, you should be able to pick out four or five things that you should change. It's very simple. If you're a one, two, three, or four, you should have four or five things that should be able to help you move that one to three up into the fives and sixes where you feel okay about it. If you're an eight or 10, you get one. Stay consistent, okay? If you're a five, six, or seven, you should probably be able to come up with three things that are small wins. Now, going back into how I actually pick out the things that I'm supposed to do. Emotionally, if you're having struggles emotionally, no, looking at what we talked about in the beginning, going back to that original slide with emotion, if you're lower in that, figure out ways to and get rid of stress, adding sleep, Working your work-life balances. What little small steps can you take to make those to where you need to be? Is that making sure you leave work at 5.30 at night certain days a week? Is that making sure you're at dinner every night, making that consistent? We're going to talk about the plan to actually get that to happen. But are those small little steps? When you go into intellectual, is it reading a book once a month? Remember, these are goals that are going to last for about 30 to 90 days. If it's physical, which is a lot of times one of the ones that we all want to figure out the most, if you exercise, if you're a one to a four, and on your one of your activities is go to the gym four or five days a week, um, some of my health ladies that are going to talk here, and you, I highly recommend staying to, to listen to their uh, their great insight. Going from no days of working out to five days of working out is really tough. <laughs> um, so, like, if you broke it down in your health, a one, two, three, or four. One of those instant activities that you can do is A, find a workout partner would be a good one. B, sign up for a gym. <laughs> Number two would be go to the gym for the first time. Like, that's two separate activities. Like Activity one, find a gym that I like. Activity two, go to the gym that I like. Activity three, go to the gym twice. And that would be three of your activities. Does that make sense? For social, same kind of concept. One of my lowest categories is social right now. I have a, a, a new daughter, so I spend a lot of my time at home. So my social aspect of my life is very restricted. Um, so mine is funny where I just have phone conversations with people to kind of talk about life more. That's an easy activity for me that makes me feel more connected because it's pretty much work, wife, <clears throat> daughter. Or more daughter, work, daughter, work, daughter, wife, and then kind of moves back and forth with that. So having those kind of things. The laugh one is interesting, because I know we mentioned it, the guys don't laugh. I actually spend about five minutes reading some funny stuff or just something I find curious and get me a little, you know, happiness that's besides if you had a crappy day and two deals didn't close and this bullshit, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna watch a little Kevin Hart for a little bit and make me laugh. <laughs> or go back and watch some George Carlin and let him tell me how crazy the world is and it still applies amazingly mm -hmm. enough to today. Um, your environment, this one I actually think is probably the one that's more impactful on all the others. It's amazing what people do to how you feel about yourself. Um, I run a team, I love being a part of a group. It makes me feel 
that uh, I'm connected to you guys. Um, shutting some of this stuff on how uh, work does not gain any financial gain for me being here. There's no, there's no you know, traditional gains for me doing any of this. The reason why I like to do this is because I hope that at some point, somebody comes back and maybe a year from now, I'm like, I got something from that. Just one. I don't need it. It's nice. Like when that happens, but it makes me feel connected to you guys because it's what I need for in my environment. Financial, we're not going to really talk about that. If you do not have a business plan because you're all business owners, it's October 1st in like two weeks. Better write a business plan. That's uh, for everyone. We're all business owners. So um, you're spiritually. I really like this one, honestly. Pray, meditate, relax. If you do not take 10 minutes out of your day and just say nothing, let it be this time for just kind of a woosah, relax. If you don't have that each day, if that's not an activity, put it on your list. It's more important than most things to have you time. Because um, I know if you guys all were really honest, your stress levels are probably like pretty high because you're business owners. If you have no stress in real estate, I just, I don't, I don't relate, but maybe that's not me. I don't know. Some of you might be very financially stable. So um, you have your small wins, your, your 15 things you do. So you have an idea of what you'd like to do. Now, one of the missions or goals is build a plan or have some accountability attached to that. <clears throat> if you have a, a, someone to work with, I don't recommend working with a spouse on uh, your activities, honestly. It's usually good to keep it outside of the family. Um, you have to make a choice. Are you actually going to do those things? So here he is, up on a ledge, hanging out. That's where you guys are right now in all these categories. I'm just sitting here chilling. He actually had a freak out. If you guys watch some of these videos, um, he had a partial meltdown in this thing and kind of had a little moment and had to go stand here. This is where he went to calm himself down. Uh, yeah. He actually doesn't. He goes over the top. So he achieves his goal every time. So. Is he's never he's never fallen so far. There's actually a, a, a I don't know if I actually played it, but uh, but he had to get down at some point. Like, they you go over the back. You can actually yeah, go, you hike down. Oh, yeah. And then there's there's people obviously filming and you can get down if you need to. They usually hike down the back side is how you actually do it. Um, but you have to make a choice. Are you going to go forward or are you going to go off? Because that's where you're at right now. Some of them might not be decisions of falling off a cliff, but are you going to make a decision to go over your obstacle? So how do you do that? Accountability is a nice thing if it's built into your business, but a lot of this cannot be done uh, with a lot of other people. You're going to do it by yourself. Some of you have already probably knew these things. I love goal boards. It's a nice way for me to visualize my I have a, a 90 day, I have a 12 month, I have a five year, and I have a 20 year. All different goals on all different, all, they all match different and kind of intertwine. Um, but I'm the type of person, if you know me, that I have a really hard time being laser focused. Like I'm like focused on 60 things at once. If you go to like my computer tab, I have 30 of them open. Yeah, there's some people like that in here, I'm sure. And like there's other people that have two and they have to delete them and they move on. Well, you have your 15 activities, okay? Or if you can, if you get to 15, the goal of them is just to win the day. Now, some of those might not be a daily activity. You want to do it over a week, which is fine. But if you have 15, your goal is to win the week, right? Which is just eight out of the 15. So what you do, two different ways. If you're visual and you're very kind of old school, you can build a to-do, doing, and done board. It's a really super basic way of being efficient, especially when it's your own personal stuff. You can apply this to business if you want as well. You take your 15 things, you put them on Mondays or Sunday nights or however you like to do it, and you put it on to do. And every day you come back, you're allowed to have three things max on doing. You're only allowed to do three things at once. Now, the interesting about the activity that we're doing today some of those might involve, like we said, multiple gym visits or doing things over a course of the week. So you break that down into four subcategories. So gym one, gym two, gym three, gym four. And they all go on to do do. Then you move it over to do, then you're done. Now, if you don't like the visual board, which is actually the way I started doing this, and it's on my house thing with just basic activities. 
Tell your wife you love her. No, like, shit, I do. <laughs> no, I, I, it's like, shit, I probably should just tell like, every day thing, like, yeah. every day, so everyone got, got that done. No, <laughs> no, no, be honest, like, you're sitting around right now, uh, how many has to be that is? Everyone? A lot of people? It's nice in the middle of the day, all of a sudden you just gotta love you, right? That's all it is, like, just, it's not like I need to tell her, because I'll probably do it during the day, but just randomly. The other ones on there, talk to your parents. I do not, it's on my list, I try to do it, it just doesn't happen, but it's on my list to do though. So, I, I don't know why that doesn't happen on a regular basis, but doing those simple things, having basic stuff on there, makes you feel like you're winning that week, right? You're doing the things you're supposed to be doing, and it's not all business, all these seven things, these seven kept things, will make you feel better about your world, your life. Um, I love reading how the brain works and reading about how, um, you interpret your world. You have two different ways of interpreting. You have your, your conscious brain, the one you built, the one you think about currently, and you have your subconscious brain which tries to keep you from doing everything that scares you. So if you know that something's gonna be good for you, but it makes you nervous, but you put it on that board, it's still gonna stare you at the face every single day. Until you do it. That wall's still gonna sit there. You're still gonna hang on that wall until you decide to move it over to doing, and then you get it done. Remember three things on your doing at any one time. Anything over that's too many. Another way you can do it is if you really wanted to stick towards uh, technology and not have it on a main tool, there's a great app called Trello. Um, it's literally next to my messages on my board, um, on my phone. If you pull up Trello, and mine literally just says daily task, and it has about 25 things on them. I just move them over. I grab one. Look, tell your wife you love her. I haven't done it yet today. <laughs> it's literally on the list. It's true. Uh, tell you, call your brother. Go to the gym. Do your mantra 15 times. We'll do real estate stuff. Call five foreign sale by owners. Call five expired listings. Call 25 current clients. Call 25 active clients. And do all those different things. You just move it over every time. I'm doing this thing. When you're done with it, you throw it to done. And I just move everything back at the end of the day to do. To do, to do. So it just starts back over every day. I noticed that if you get eight of the 15, just one over half, you will feel so much better about completing the day. You've made it to over 50%. Weird way how the mind works, um, but it literally allows you to kind of have a traditional way. I know someone that's Trello has over 150 things on it each day, and he just hammers them out. Most productive person I know. I did it just like, do, 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 just does one, does one, does, but he goes, those 150 things will just be like his bread and butter. <sighs> Makes a lot of money doing that kind of stuff. He just does certain activity every day, ding, 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 and it just works right through it. Mm. I love this quote as well. One does not discover new lands without consenting to lose sight of the shore for a very long time. You guys are currently sitting on your shore on a lot of different subjects, most likely giving you kind of an insight to what you'd like to think about you'd like to do. Whether or not you choose to do it is completely up to you. You have to choose. Make a decision to lose sight of where you currently are. Possibly lose sight of what you currently think about stuff. You might lose sight of people that you like, enjoy being around. You might lose sight of a lot of comfortable things. We always hear the, you know, the, the silly quote that you know, every great thing is outside your own comfort zone. You know, there's a lot of great things inside your comfort zone. But if you want to get to different places, if you want to see new lands, if you want to see yourself and your life really, really change, you have to give up where you are. You have to take those first 30 steps off that walk, rock face to get up to where you want to go. So if you'd like to make a choice to live your life by your design, you can put 15 things down today and try to push yourself to do them for the next 30 days. If you can do eight of the 15 every day for 30 days and you've called me in 30 days, I bet you 1,000% that your life has changed already. For the good. It's very, very, very basic, simple activities each day that you know that will help you interpret your own world. So, guys, that's my living your life by design. Um, if you guys have any questions, I mean, it's pretty simple. The ladies here that are going to talk and uh, health fitness are going to really dive more into specific subjects on possibly ways to get you into their categories of, of expertise. But this is a great way to kind of think of where you are currently 
Um, as I mentioned, I always think about October 1st as being kind of the start of our year because it's the end of our summer, which is our winter compared to most people. So it's a great time to kind of reassess where you are. And then from that point, I actually put some activities in place to really kind of see your next 12 months, next six months, next 90 days be what you want it to be rather than hitting it with wherever you, you know, sporadically as we got to go. So hope you guys find it to be somewhat informative and you guys can take a break. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate your time.